Our Supreme Court confirmation coverage continues day three here of these hearings for Judge Jackson. And I'm joined, as promised, by Ellie Mistal, the justice correspondent for the nation. He's the author of a New York Times bestseller, Allow Me to Retort. And we're going to get right into it. Here's Senator Ted Cruz when he wouldn't even follow the rules as he tried to show that he was more upset than anyone. It's Senator, under- would you please let her respond? No, not if she's not going to answer my well, question. Just- you have taken over a minute of my time, Mr. Chairman. Okay. So, so you've been given extra time. Come in with 57 time months. Time has expired. Why Senator, did you send minutes them over just the allotted- 57 months in- please, Senator. requested by the prosecutor? Please, Senator. Will you allow her to a- answer the question, Chairman Durbin? Senator Coons. W- why are you not allowing her to answer the question? Chairman Durbin, I've never seen the chairman refuse to allow a witness to answer a question. You can bang it as loud as you want. Well, I can just tell you, at some point, you have to follow the rules. Ellie? When? When is the day that Ted Cruz will be made to follow the rules? Because I haven't seen it. Please tell me when. I will sign up for it. I will sit there and watch Ted Cruz to be made to follow the rules. But right now, the Democrats won't do that. Look at what Chris Coons did in that situation. He was very nice. He was waiting his turn. That's not what I would have done. Once once it's my time to talk, I would have started talking just like I did right now. Why couldn't Coons do that when Cruz is going over time, right? Like, at the end of the day, people have to remember, and I know you do, Ari, where this screaming from the Judiciary Committee started. They love to bring it up, so let's bring it up. Let's go back to 2018. Brett Kavanaugh has been accused of alleged att- of attempted rape by Christine Blasey Ford. She has given testimony in front of the Senate. That testimony is compelling. That testimony is believable. Republicans have a female assistant, their word, not mine, cross-examining her. That's not going well. They take a break, and they come back, and Lindsey Graham starts shouting. He doesn't have yeah, a point. Speech doesn't have any evidence. He just starts crying and shouting, sneering, right? And then the rest of the Republicans start shouting. And then Brett Kavanaugh starts shouting and crying and whatever. And like that, we go from a serious hearing about a serious allegation to a circus caused by the Republicans to get their guy through. Yeah. And that well, is me... exactly what Lindsey Graham did throughout this hearing. He started screaming, right. and then the rest of the Republicans followed line. I think there's value to you drawing that link, especially having watched these hearings, that it was the other side and their version of that history that came up a lot. You're offering a bit of a corrective. Uh, As promised, I mentioned to to our previous guests and viewers, we're going to get into the QAnon stuff a little more. I'm just reading here from some of the reporting out of The Washington Post um, that notes Republican activists increasingly use this language of child pornography crackdowns. Uh, One experienced Democratic official, Brian Fallon, from Demand Justice, says, quote, it's a sop to the QAnon element. Um, And I just want to be very clear, there is a way to look at a judge's record, including their sentencing, that's going to touch on things that are unsavory by the very nature that they do criminal sentencing. Um, And that's certainly valid. Uh, This seemed to cross over, especially as the hours wore on, into something else. Uh, Mr. Fallon um, who has experience in um, in the Justice Department, sees it as this. Um, can you walk us through what may or may not be, um, but it certainly is an accusation of an effort to link this to broader conspiracy theories that anyone that the right wing disagrees with are part of a secret international cabal of pedophiles? First, let's remember, why are we talking about sentencing at all? This is a Supreme Court appointment. The Supreme Court is an appellate court. It doesn't sentence True. people. It reviews sentences, but doesn't sentence people themselves. So even going into this part of the history of her her judicial history is a bit of a non sequitur. So now we have to ask why they're going particularly hard into child pornography. Now, again, they're not actually talking about the child porn cases because all of those cases, she's, you know, they don't have anything on her there. So now we're talking about the subset of cases, which is a nuanced position of people who were not accused of doing the child porn, but looking at the child porn. And that's where you get get Lindsey Graham. Well, I think looking is just as bad as that. Well, so do I. But we have sentencing for that. So they're, 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 they're trying to massage this very nuanced point. We know, we have evidence that this kind of allegation increase is is believed by the QAnon crazies on their side and leads to direct violence. You know who else knows that? The Republicans making these arguments. You know who else knows that? Ketanji Brown-Jackson. Why do I know that she knows that? Because Ketanji Brown-Jackson 
is who sentenced the Pizzagate guy. Ed mm. Welch, he was sentenced for his crimes. He got for the four years. Um, the prosecutors asked for four and a half. She downward departure from what the prosecutors asked for, gave him four. You know, it's interesting, don't you think, that of all this talk about sentencing, him, uh, uh, Jackson actually sentencing the Pizzagate guy, that has never come up from the Republicans. I wonder why. Yeah, just, so this is important. I just want to underscore it because you, you talk so fast, you know, I, I can almost Sorry. barely keep up. I just underscoring you're referring to what what I was discussing with Dahlia that a right wing conspiracy theory online followed by someone who was sadly violent and deranged and they showed up in Washington where they thought they were going to bust up a Clinton esque pedophilia operation and people got hurt and as you say as a local D.C. judge federal local district judge she was the one sentencing it uh, I have one more thing to play for you but any final thought on that well I just want to say again she is primed to be hated by the people who are most susceptible to these allegations, right? Mm. That's that's right. the connection that's important for people to understand. Yeah, and I think you make that clearly, and you, you have a mastery of the details, which is helpful because there's a lot, a lot to get through here.